August 24, Jeremiah's Land Purchase The following message came to Jeremiah from the Lord in the tenth year of the reign of Zedekiah, king of Judah. This was also the eighteenth year of the reign of King Nebuchadnezzar. Jerusalem was then under siege from the Babylonian army, and Jeremiah was imprisoned in the courtyard of the guard in the royal palace. King Zedekiah had put him there, asking why he kept giving this prophecy. This is what the Lord says. I am about to hand this city over to the king of Babylon, and he will take it. King Zedekiah will be captured by the Babylonians and taken to meet the king of Babylon face to face. He will take Zedekiah to Babylon, and I will deal with him there, says the Lord. If you fight against the Babylonians, you will never succeed. At that time, the Lord sent me a message. He said, Your cousin Hanimal, son of Shalem, will come and say to you, Buy my field at Anathoth. By law, you have the right to buy it before it is offered to anyone else. Then, just as the Lord had said he would, my cousin Hanimel came and visited me in prison. He said, Please buy my field at Anathoth in the land of Benjamin. By law, you have the right to buy it before it is offered to anyone else. So buy it for yourself. Then I knew that the message I had heard was from the Lord. So I bought the field at Anathoth, paying Hanimel seventeen pieces of silver for it. I signed and sealed the deed of purchase before witnesses, weighed out the silver, and paid him. Then I took the sealed deed and an unsealed copy of the deed, which contained the terms and conditions of the purchase, and I handed them to Barak, son of Neriah, and grandson of Mesaiah. I did all this in the presence of my cousin Hanimal, the witnesses who had signed the deed, and all the men of Judah who were there in the courtyard of the guardhouse. Then I said to Barak, as they all listened, This is what the Lord of heaven's armies, the God of Israel, says. Take both this sealed deed and the unsealed copy and put them into a pottery jar to preserve them for a long time. For this is what the Lord of heaven's armies, the God of Israel, says. Some day people will again own property here in this land and will buy and sell houses and vineyards and fields. Jeremiah's Prayer Then, after I had given the papers to Barak, I prayed to the Lord. O Sovereign Lord, you made the heavens and earth by your strong hand and powerful arm. Nothing is too hard for you. You show unfailing love to thousands, but you also bring the consequences of one generation's sin upon the next. You are the great and powerful God, the Lord of heaven's armies. You have all wisdom and do great and mighty miracles. You see the conduct of all people, and you give them what they deserve. You performed miraculous signs and wonders in the land of Egypt, things still remembered to this day. And you have continued to do great miracles in Israel and all around the world. You have made your name famous to this day. You brought Israel out of Egypt with mighty signs and wonders, with a strong hand and powerful arm, and with overwhelming terror. You gave the people of Israel this land that you had promised their ancestors long before, a land flowing with milk and honey. Our ancestors came and conquered it and lived in it, but they refused to obey you or follow your word. They have not done anything you commanded. That is why you have sent this terrible disaster upon them. See how the siege ramps have been built against the city walls. Through war, famine, and disease, the city will be handed over to the Babylonians, who will conquer it. Everything has happened just as you said, and yet, O Sovereign Lord, you have told me to buy the field, paying good money for it before these witnesses, even though the city will soon be handed over to the Babylonians. A Prediction of Jerusalem's Fall Then this message came to Jeremiah from the Lord. I am the Lord, the God of all the peoples of the world. Is anything too hard for me? Therefore, this is what the Lord says. I will hand the city over to the Babylonians and to Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and he will capture it. The Babylonians outside the walls will come in and set fire to the city. They will burn down all these houses where the people provoked my anger by burning incense to Baal on the rooftops and by pouring out liquid offerings to other gods. Israel and Judah have done nothing but wrong since their earliest days. They have infuriated me with all their evil deeds, says the Lord. From the time this city was built until now, it has done nothing but anger me, so I am determined to get rid of it. The sins of Israel and Judah, the sins of the people of Jerusalem, 
The kings, the officials, the priests, and the prophets have stirred up my anger. My people have turned their backs on me and refused to return. Even though I diligently taught them, they would not receive instruction or obey. They have set up their abominable idols right in my own temple, defiling it. They have built pagan shrines to Baal in the valley of Ben-Hinnom, and there they sacrifice their sons and daughters to Moloch. I have never commanded such a horrible deed. It never even crossed my mind to command such a thing. What an incredible evil, causing Judah to sin so greatly. A Promise of Restoration Now, I want to say something more about this city. You have been saying it will fall to the king of Babylon through war, famine, and disease. But this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says, I will certainly bring my people back again from all the countries where I will scatter them in my fury. I will bring them back to this very city and let them live in peace and safety. They will be my people, and I will be their God, and I will give them one heart and one purpose, to worship me forever for their own good and for the good of all their descendants. And I will make an everlasting covenant with them. I will never stop doing good for them. I will put a desire in their hearts to worship me, and they will never leave me. I will find joy doing good for them, and will faithfully and wholeheartedly replant them in this land. This is what the Lord says. Just as I have brought all these calamities on them, so I will do all the good I have promised them. Fields will again be bought and sold in this land about which you now say, It has been ravaged by the Babylonians, a desolate land where people and animals have all disappeared. Yes, fields will once again be bought and sold, deeds signed and sealed and witnessed, in the land of Benjamin and here in Jerusalem, in the towns of Judah and in the hill country, in the foothills of Judah and in the Negev too. For someday I will restore prosperity to them. I, the Lord, have spoken. Promises of Peace and Prosperity While Jeremiah was still confined in the courtyard of the guard, the Lord gave him this second message. This is what the Lord says, The Lord who made the earth, who formed and established it, whose name is the Lord, ask me and I will tell you remarkable secrets you do not know about things to come. For this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says, You have torn down the houses of this city and even the king's palace to get materials to strengthen the walls against the siege ramps and swords of the enemy. You expect to fight the Babylonians, but the men of this city are already as good as dead. For I have determined to destroy them in my terrible anger. I have abandoned them because of all their wickedness. Nevertheless, the time will come when I will heal Jerusalem's wounds and give it prosperity and true peace. I will restore the fortunes of Judah and Israel and rebuild their towns. I will cleanse them of their sins against me and forgive all their sins of rebellion. Then this city will bring me joy, glory, and honor before all the nations of the earth. The people of the world will see all the good I do for my people, and they will tremble with awe at the peace and prosperity I provide for them. This is what the Lord says. You have said this is a desolate land where people and animals have all disappeared. Yet in the empty streets of Jerusalem and Judah's other towns, there will be heard once more the sounds of joy and laughter. The joyful voices of bridegrooms and brides will be heard again, along with the joyous songs of people bringing thanksgiving offerings to the Lord. They will sing, Give thanks to the Lord of heaven's armies, for the Lord is good. His faithful love endures forever. For I will restore the prosperity of this land to what it was in the past, says the Lord. This is what the Lord of heaven's army says. This land, though it is now desolate and has no people and animals, will once more have pastures where shepherds can lead their flocks. Once again, shepherds will count their flocks in the towns of the hill country, the foothills of Judah, the Negev, the land of Benjamin, the vicinity of Jerusalem, and all the towns of Judah, I, the Lord, have spoken." The day will come, says the Lord, when I will do for Israel and Judah all the good things I have promised them. In those days and at that time, I will raise up a righteous descendant from King David's line. He will do what is just and right throughout the land. In that day, Judah will be saved and Jerusalem will live in safety. And this will be its name. 
The Lord is our righteousness. For this is what the Lord says, David will have a descendant sitting on the throne of Israel forever, and there will always be Levitical priests to offer burnt offerings and grain offerings and sacrifices to me. Then this message came to Jeremiah from the Lord. This is what the Lord says, If you can break my covenant with the day and the night, so that one does not follow the other, only then will my covenant with my servant David be broken. Only then will he no longer have a descendant to reign on his throne. The same is true for my covenant with the Levitical priests who minister before me. And as the stars of the sky cannot be counted, and the sand on the seashore cannot be measured, so I will multiply the descendants of my servant David and the Levites who minister before me. The Lord gave another message to Jeremiah. He said, Have you noticed what people are saying? The Lord chose Judah and Israel and then abandoned them. They are snaring and saying that Israel is not worthy to be counted as a nation. But this is what the Lord says. I would no more reject my people than I would change my laws that govern night and day, earth and sky. I will never abandon the descendants of Jacob or David, my servant, or change the plan that David's descendants will rule the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Instead, I will restore them to their land. And have mercy on them. Ezekiel's Message for Tyre On February 3, during the twelfth year of King Jehoiachin's captivity, this message came to me from the Lord. Son of man, Tyre has rejoiced over the fall of Jerusalem, saying, Ha! She who was the gateway to the rich trade routes to the east has been broken, and I am the heir. Because she has been made desolate, I will become wealthy. Therefore, this is what the Sovereign Lord says. I am your enemy, O Tyre, and I will bring many nations against you, like the waves of the sea crashing against your shoreline. They will destroy the walls of Tyre and tear down its towers. I will scrape away its soil and make it a bare rock. It will be just a rock in the sea, a place for fishermen to spread their nets. For I have spoken, says the Sovereign Lord. Tyre will become the prey of many nations, and its mainland villages will be destroyed by the sword. Then they will know that I am the Lord. This is what the Sovereign Lord says. From the north I will bring King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon against Tyre. He is king of kings and brings his horses, chariots, charioteers, and great army. First, he will destroy your mainland villages. Then he will attack you by building a siege wall, constructing a ramp, and raising a roof of shields against you. He will pound your walls with battering rams and demolish your towers with sledgehammers. The hooves of his horses will choke the city with dust, and the noise of the charioteers and chariot wheels will shake your walls as they storm through your broken gates. His horsemen will trample through every street in the city. They will butcher your people, and your strong pillars will topple. They will plunder all your riches and merchandise and break down your walls. They will destroy your lovely homes and dump your stones and timbers and even your dust into the sea. I will stop the music of your songs. No more will the sound of harps be heard among your people. I will make your island a bare rock, a place for fishermen to spread their nets. You will never be rebuilt, for I, the Lord, have spoken. Yes, the Sovereign Lord has spoken." The Effect of Tyre's Destruction This is what the Sovereign Lord says to Tyre. The whole coastline will tremble at the sound of your fall, as the screams of the wounded echo in the continuing slaughter. All the seaport rulers will step down from their thrones and take off their royal robes and beautiful clothing. They will sit on the ground trembling with horror at your destruction. Then they will wail for you, singing this funeral song. O famous island city, once ruler of the sea, how you have been destroyed! Your people, with their naval power, once spread fear around the world. Now the coastlands tremble at your fall. The islands are dismayed as you disappear. This is what the Sovereign Lord says. I will make Tyre an uninhabited ruin, like many others. I will bury you beneath the terrible waves of enemy attack. Great seas will swallow you. I will send you to the pit to join those who descended there long ago. Your city will lie in ruins, buried beneath the earth, like those in the pit who have entered the world of the dead. You will have no place of respect here in the land of the living. I will bring you to a terrible end, and you will exist no more. 
you will be looked for, but you will never again be found. I, the Sovereign Lord, have spoken.